got a customer that wanted 1,000 horsepower at the wheels um, running E85. He did not want to use any of the current aftermarket solutions, uh, an augmented big bore factory pump. Um, he didn't want to use port injection and he didn't want to use methanol injection. So this system allows us to have the fuel capacity necessary to support 1,000 horsepower at the wheels uh, and it's done entirely with direct injection. People that are interested in making big horsepower numbers without meth, they're the guys that are going to be interested in this system. The KTEC Extreme DI fuel system is a fuel system that adds a secondary direct injection fuel pump to the original factory OEM fuel system. Uh, KTEC has developed it for the Gen 5 LT1, LT4 engine platform, but it can be used on any gasoline direct injection engine. The system was a development partnership between KTEC and Extreme DI. Um, XDI was responsible for the pump. Um, along with the electronics that are standalone to operate the secondary pump. KTEC was responsible for taking the pump, putting it on the engine, uh, running the engine in engine dyno, so doing the engine ECU calibration, the spark curve, the fuel tables, um, and then doing the chassis dyno after the vehicle is totally assembled. KTEC chose to partner with Extreme DI because Uwe Ostman, the founder and the owner of the company, is an ex-Bosch uh, diesel engineer. He was the main calibration engineer for the Le Mans winning Audi diesel teams. Um, he's got a lot of experience with fuel injection. I would say he's probably one of the top DI engineers in the world. The KTEC Extreme DI fuel system is pretty much a brand new approach of providing fuel to a direct injected engine. It's not like other people have tried to do. Um, try to replace a given pump with a bigger pump, it's pretty much adding another pump. The system is an add-on fuel pump that allows you to use gasoline direct injection only to, you know, hit a thousand horsepower and beyond. As of now, the pump is so scalable that there is no real limit. And with the injectors that we have right now, we're looking at on straight E85, from the pump, no artificial lap style fuels, 1100 to 1200 horsepower to the wheels, which is around 13 to 1400 to the flywheel. On race gas, the system is able to support 14 to 1500 wheel horsepower, which translates to 16, 1700 horsepower to the flywheel. With the larger injectors that we are developing right now, will be able to support 1,800 horsepower to the wheels on race gas, which translates to more than 2,000 horsepower to the flywheel. If you want to take full advantage of the system, you need to have, you know, number one, first and foremost, some way to get the air into the engine that's, that, that will take advantage of this fuel flow. So that's typically going to be a supercharger or twin turbo system, something of those means. And if you're going to that extreme, you know, you're already doing camshaft, you're probably doing engine internals, you know, a crankshaft, pistons, rods, that sort of thing. So, you know, to take full advantage of the system, you're really, it's just for the top, top of the line, you know, biggest of the baddest engine build that you can do. So this system on our demonstrator car was able to put out 900 foot-pounds of torque at 3,000 RPM on the engine dyno, um, and it made 960 horse. Like, yeah, it's not as impressive as having 1,500 horsepower from a twin turbo thing, but it's a 2,300, you know, 2,300 Eaton blower. So it's not going to flow as much air, and most of the people would know that. And more importantly, the torque curve is, like, ridiculous. What you're really looking for and what you really want, in my opinion, is area under the curve. The more area that you have under the curve, the more usable power you have. It's great to have 1,000 horsepower, it's great to have 1,200 horsepower, but if it happens at 7,500 RPM, you know, how often are you actually gonna operate your engine at that RPM? You know, if you've got 1,500 horsepower at 7,000 RPM, but you've got 
500 horsepower at 3,000 RPM, eh, you're, you're going to be operating more in the 3,000 RPM range than you are the 7,500 RPM range. So what's really important when you're looking at a horsepower and torque graph is that you've got a nice broad torque curve, nice broad power curve, and that there's a lot of area under the curve. The peak number, granted it's important for bragging rights, it's not as important in the real world. The nice thing about the KTEC Extreme DI system is that it integrates with the factory controller. So we have all degrees of freedom of controlling fueling in terms of minimum injection durations, pressure levels, idle, um, idle stability will not be heard. The controller talks to the factory ECU. So whenever the factory ECU algorithms want to reduce output, the KTEC Extreme DI fuel system will do it as well. Our system pretty much is based on OEM approved solutions that are validated for production runtime, 300,000 miles. And we are not modifying the core of it. So the essential parts in the DI pump, for example, piston, sleeve, parts that have clearances of microns, two microns diameter tolerance. We don't modify that. We keep the factory design, the OEM design, which is validated from the manufacturer, OEM levels. Um, we don't mess with that. We add a second pump that was built to the same standards, that was validated to the same standards. So we believe it's way more durable. I would say the vision for the product when I first envisioned it is exactly the way it is. It's an add-on fuel system. It does exactly what it was intended to do, and that gets you more power you know, at the wheels with gasoline direct injection only. There's no drivability impacts with the system other than the additional performance that you get because of it. So, you know, you might eat tires. It's really just something for somebody that wants everything. Just have the best and biggest DI fuel system there is.